head set my head through a little little spin for a minute, but um, you know, we're gonna receive a bit of fud, I think, from that too. Um, people are gonna say, you know, that's not what he meant, and all these things like they used to say. Um, but I mean, it was pretty clear to me, you know, what what the whole point of that was. Um, he's he's talking about safety, right? Having a safe stable a safe stable coin on Pulse Chain that we don't need to use a bridge for, right? So for people to to come out there and say like, oh, he's talking about like the bridged over coins, like where's the safety in that right like those the bridges are exploitable so yeah anyways um i mean it's 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 clear to us obviously uh what's go what's going on here but it's going to be up to us to kind of you know get other people to kind of see the light right and um sometimes when people have been preaching something for a while uh they don't really want to be wrong <laughs> right so they're gonna they're gonna have some contention um with, with our statements but i think uh just with time right time and patience and um just kind of being positive and not you know downplaying anybody you know because obviously like they had a belief system and we're kind of presenting information that's you know going against that um so yeah just kind of got to be nice and try, just try to guide them in the right direction when we can and um you know just just uh use our hearts right like richard uh, but yeah, we got another speaker up here. Um, let's see, what's up, Pulse Chain OG? I, I know I've talked to you before. Uh, let's see if we can get you up here. Hello, can you hear me? I, I don't know if my if everybody's hearing me well. That's good. My my Wi-Fi here in Thailand is not great. I know. Um, but yeah, Pulse Chain OG, welcome, man. What's going on? What's up? What's up? Um, I just wanted to say I thought it was interesting that I don't really know what his motivation would have been to do this necessarily, but he's, I mean, he hates admin keys and shit, so the fact that he mentioned USDC as a part of that tweet is interesting. I think maybe he's just lumping all the stables in together, but obviously he prefers die for that reason. Right. No, and I completely agree. I think I think personally the reason why he included all those was probably a multi-part reason. Um, first being that if he was just to be like, you know, hey guys, why aren't you looking at die or something? You know, it'd just be a mad rush, right? So now it kind of leaves it open to a bit of speculation. Um, also, number two, the fact that um, all of the stable coins are like moving in cohesion together now. Um, since I think there's something that happened back in July, and after that point, now they're all kind of, you know, they're all staying at the same kind of level. Um, and whether that has to do with like the Atropa ecosystem or whatever it may be, um, you know, they they do all seem like they may reach you know that dollar at the same point if if we get to that point. Um, but yeah, I think that if he was kind of just solely speaking about dying that post, then it would kind of be like a game over, I guess. <laughs> So you're saying all the stables in, it, in that tweet all move together? They're pegged to each other? Yeah, they're they're pegged like without like being pegged kind of. They're pegged more through like arbitrage and like how things are paired. Right, okay. I mean, yeah, if you, if you check and look at like USDC, USDT, and DAI, they, they, they do follow each other pretty much exact. Is there large LPs between them? Or is this strictly our ARB stuff going on here? I, I guess I couldn't really say for sure, so I don't want to uh, give you a wrong answer. Okay. Yeah, definitely exciting stuff. Um, I posted a clip from the video that I posted a long time ago, actually months ago. Um, it was our Richard Hart uh, speaking on one of his live streams about the test net for Pulse Chain. Uh, you know, he's saying like the test net's going to be launching soon and that he's been speaking with multiple different projects that are going to want to build on test net. And the first thing that he mentioned was that the, he's been in, in call, talks with somebody who is building a MakerDAO replacement so that we can have die on Pulse Chain. And those were his, his physical words. Um, so, I mean, I know a lot of people maybe don't remember that or kind of hear it in their own way, but 
that that did happen. Yeah, no, nah, I, I remember. Um, I just think it's interesting the way Richard Hart worded the post. He said, if you got DAI, USDC, and USDT to have their stable coins directly on Pulse Chain as every other network, it would increase security and reduce costs. But that's a that's confusing because they are on Pulse Chain already. Right. They were forked. The contract addresses are the exact same. The protocols are the same. Whoever owns the keys on ETH has complete control on Pulse Chain. So that doesn't really make sense to me why you would phrase it that way. Um, the only thing I can get at from that is essentially bring over the their, the money to back those coins on Pulse Chain. Um, which, if you take it that way, then the MakerDAO vote in July makes complete sense. I mean, to me, the MakerDAO vote in July to change the minting, uh, there was a plan to use DAI all along. And this is just the start of him starting to potentially acknowledge that. Uh, without coming out and saying it directly. Right. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And whether or not, you know, Richard and the Tropa Dev have any connection, you know, whether or not they'd be talking to each other or whatever, I think that it could have been possible that Maria um, had kind of foreseen, like, the actions maybe Richard may be taking and trying to... Um, get die to become a stable coin on pulse chain um and probably being the reason why she collected so much and paired a tropa to it at first just just a thought yeah do we know the because i know a tropa was on testnet but when the first lp was created between die and a tropa and that and that was burned do we know when that was? Was that before or after the Maker Dow vote? That was before. Atropa was launched in June, I think. Okay. May, I think it was released right after Pulse Chain's launch, either late May or early June. Because is Atropa paired with anything, uh, any other stables like P stables, um, heavily, or is Die by far the biggest LP or the only yeah. LP? I mean, Dai is definitely by far the biggest. I think it's over 10 million now. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure about the other ones, honestly. I couldn't really say. Because to me, the LP was burned before the vote was made. That would indicate to me if a trouble is involved, Maria is involved with pegging Dai, and there's all, I'll call it a conspiracy for all this happening behind the scenes between RH team and a Tropa dev. Like the timing on that would would indicate that that's the case because if the LP was burned before the vote was made, you know what I'm saying. The timing, I would have expected it to be the opposite. Oh right. Or it's like okay, if she wasn't aware of this plan, quote unquote, she wouldn't have selected die until after the vote because that vote would have been the tip off the people paying attention to like oh shit this stable might actually be used for something because the ETH people are spending millions to get the contract changed or the DAO changed on the Pulse Chain side but because the LP was burned before that vote happened that makes it seem like uh, this person was in the know of something $25 right, no, that could definitely make sense. And I'm not really sure of the date of the burn. Um, I know it did take a little bit of time for the contract to get renounced. Um, like we def we would, we'd found a tropa and we were making videos and things like that. And the main point of FUD basically back then was like, you know, all these contracts are not renounced and stuff like that. And then like, I think a day after I went on Corey Costa's stream, um, a bunch of contracts started to get renounced. Um, but the burn... I'm just not really aware of, and I just I would assume maybe it happened. Def I I would assume it happened before the MakerDAO vote, 
just because the tropa launched so much sooner than that. Um, but yeah, that's just an, that's just uh, my opinion. I don't really have facts to back that up yet. Yeah, I'm just too lazy to look right now on my phone. <laughs> All right, no, same here. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to go and check that out for us, that would be really, really awesome, honestly. And you can kind of report back here and let us know if anybody knows the date of the burn between Atropa and Dai. That would be super, super helpful. Also, guys, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you can always raise your hand. And, um, obviously, the more people up here, the better for the conversation. Um, and then we can keep going as long as we can into the night. That doesn't matter with me. I'm, it's my morning time, so I pretty basically have all day. Uh, but yeah, be, if you haven't shared the space yet, I know we have some new listeners in here. Please share the space. We're trying to get as many people in here as possible. Uh, it will really help the ecosystem grow. We get new eyes, people from Ethereum, and all, all other types of blockchains come in. And hopefully we're, you know, educating a few people, you know, while we, while we chat. So my, my knowledge of like, die on ETH is, is limited. But I, I mean, I understand it's decentralized. So with no admin keys, no one controls it, quote unquote. So like going off to Richard's tweet, if, if, if he is at basically saying community go raid them and to essentially have them start backing the the copies on the pulse chain side like who who is the point of contact for die if it's not you know what i'm saying like who are you? yeah i think so that at, i'm not sure yes yeah, but he was speaking about like a maker dial replacement right so it wouldn't be like them in control or uh, yeah this is all kind of still confusing to me too but the thing is so for copy contracts the the, the initial creator deployer is still the they still have direct oversight and and edit modifications or you know ownership of the fork so like usdc for example like if the ETH side of the contract was like fuck pulse chain, like we don't want y'all using that shit, they could come on over, um, you know, log into the the contract that controls uh, USDC and turn it off. Um, so like that's why the vote had to come from the DAO on ETH because the forked version, that's who owns and has who has the ability to, to make those changes on the forked copy. Right, right. Which so why the DAO believe, had the ability to do that. The DAO did. Correct. Which is why I believe the DAI narrative has legs because that payment and that change happened. Like, if they, if they had no plans to do anything on the Pulse Chain side, why would they do that? I mean, it was like a million dollars. It was not like right. some chump yeah. change here. Tornado cash. <laughs> yeah. Who do we know who likes tornado cash? Right. <laughs> Uh, so we do got another speaker up here on the stage. I uh, want to hear from Kevin. What's up, Kevin? How are you? Hey, good, man. Uh, thanks for having the space. Uh, I love p -Dye. It's just one of the best narratives. I think it's just so original, so authentic, like so badass in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was just wondering what you thought about what Richard said. And do you think that... The die, the original die creators, or the die like development, uh, or people that are just the consensus or development people on the original die would have to reissue anything, or if maybe just the P die community pumping it would be just the ultimate signal. Send that would be signal, right? Like if we if we were able to pump it enough, that would be 
they would just be like shocked and that would be enough, right? Yeah, so I mean in terms of like us being able to use the die, right? So it, it only comes down to like this like stabilization factor really, like because the maker DAO people they don't have I don't think they have control over the die on Pulse Chain anymore. Um, and we've heard from Maria in the chat logs uh, when, when she's been asked about the stabilization of the copied over stable coins. Um, she says that there needs to be between three to four billion dollars worth of TVL locked up in the Atropa ecosystem for that to happen. Okay, yeah, that's that weird to like. know because uh, Atropa is very interesting as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all, they're all tied together, right? So Tropa and Buy, that LP pairing has, like, I think it's over $10 million in uh, burnt LP. 99% of that LP is completely burned and can't be touched. Um, so, yeah, it's a it's super, super impressive metric that I don't think we've seen in crypto so far, um, especially from some, like, anonymous developer, right? There was something else I wanted to ask, but it's it just slipped my mind. So if I if I remember, I will definitely ask. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, but yeah, but then basically, what we were kind of just kind of going over everything that you're you're kind of curious about. You know, like what Richard Hart is meaning behind all this and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, we're pretty sure that he, he wants people to kind of bridge over their stable coins into Pulse Chain. I think that's one of like the the things that he wants, right? Because with the farms and everything that he released earlier on, I think that was the intention until the Pepe guys came over and just started to dump all their coins and um, then he you know, reverted, you know, back to no more farms, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, this is, um, I think it's all a big part of the the whole plan. It's, it's just unknown to me and to everybody else. I'm super curious, just like, if the plan of Richard and if the plan of Maria, you know, if is, are they having the same plan? Or do they talk to each other? Like, have they ever, you know, that's, uh, I'm very curious about that, honestly, myself. I don't know if I'll ever get an answer to that, but I hope so. But yeah, all in all, very exciting stuff. Super happy to be here. Glad I could host this space today because I was going to do one tomorrow, actually, but tomorrow would have been not a very good day for me. And uh, when I saw that everything was pumping this morning, uh, you know, I just had to do it because uh, that's what we did back in the day when everything was pumping. We would get in spaces and chat about everything going on. But, you know, it's just a Saturday night. I understand that not everybody can be here. That's okay. But yeah, nobody, I would love to hear from anybody else in the community that wants to chat. And we can keep this going. But for now, a bit of music. Getting out. If anybody wants to request the mic, please do. Out, guys, make sure we get some more people in here. If you are, if you don't want to chat, that's fine. But we need to get some people in here that do want to chat. But we can hang out. I got a lot of time.
Yo, so I kind of have another question too. Hello? Go for it. Yeah, so I'm just imagining like we get to a dollar and then let's say like uh, it, it kind of fluctuates between a dollar and maybe like in the 90, 95 cent area because people are like, you know, it's a dollar, it should be a dollar. So people buy it up when it's like 95 or 99 or whatever and or sell it when it's like a dollar and a cent and you know and change but like when the bear market hits again like what would like how could we possibly keep it at a dollar like once the next bear market hits you know right that's a pretty good question actually um and i'm honestly not technical enough to be able to answer something like that uh only answer that i can like, give people is like you know, we really are seeing kind of like an incomplete ecosystem so far with the Tropa. We don't really know what any of it does or what it could do in the future. What kind of protocols will be affiliated with it or associated or building on top of it. Um, so it's it's kind of like up in the air. But there are there are ways, right? There are like ways to keep people from selling, right? If they put if they lock up, lock up their tokens or do something else to maybe earn a yield. Uh, those are all different kind of ways, I guess, that it can help. What do you think? Well, I think a big part of it will be the arbitrage between EDI and PDI once it once it gets to a dollar, because then bots will, will make profit between the two pairs. Um, which is why that whole like EDI, PDI, LP community thing started because I think people are understanding that that's a big part of it. Right. So by by making those in LP, then arbitrage bots can basically fix the price in between the two. Correct. Yeah. So it's turn 11, you'll see... Got it. But the question, though, is... And I'm, I'm not uh, as up to speed on the east side and stuff, but how does EDI keep its peg? You know what I mean? It's collateralized by, you know, millions of dollars. But what's the actual function that keeps it to a dollar, right? Is it, is it baked in the contract? I, I don't don't think so or is there like an external bottle you know bot automation that keeps it there is it is it in contract out of contract I, I don't know but if it's in contract then obviously the with the fork the PDI contract is the same contract as ETH so that would already be baked in there but the fact that it's not at a dollar I don't know if that it has to come within you know a couple percentage points of a dollar before that function begins. Yes, yeah, so um, I remember actually. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Um, I do remember Richard talking about it in a video, like fractionally reserved stable coins, right? So, like, there were certain times where I forget which stable coin he was talking about, but it was like so fractionally reserved, like they barely had any money to back it up at all, but it's traded at a dollar. I think you muted yourself unless you finished the. Oh, yeah, no, I was just saying that. Uh, just some of the fractionally reserved stable coins that we're just talking about in one of his videos, like um, one of the ones that he was just not backed by much money at all, yet it's still traded for a dollar. He's kind of just giving that point. Yeah, but what I what I don't know is is what is the actual tech the functionality that is allowing it to stay at a dollar because if, if if 50 cells come in without any buys it's you know it might go down to 99 cents but eventually it goes back to a dollar it's fluctuates by a penny generally so like everybody yeah, really sure. dollars like the, the chart we get wrecked on any other coin but it doesn't on stables so what's what's the function that's actually keeping that level 
yeah, if anybody has the answer to that, please, please, please step up and give it to us. Because I mean, I, it makes sense to me that okay, there's a pool of money. It's it's collateralized against the token. So when there's a sell, it pulls out of that pool of money. But where where is the code for that to, to for that to execute? That's my question. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't done uh, enough technical digging into the MakerDAO contract and how it works. I guess just uh, you know, just uh, of like above board stuff. Not too technical myself, honestly. I'm just learning a lot of this stuff, but really just to to under, try to understand all this stuff at least. With um, this P died, right? So we're gonna have a bunch more people in the in the Telegram chat. All right, go and you know. Yeah, there's gonna be a bunch more people in the chat, you know, asking what's going on. Um, obviously, we have to give a, a, a pitch again to a lot of people and get them onto a Maria. And um, I'm kind of just glad that. Maria has been a little bit more um, understandable or easy to understand in the chat logs. Um, she's like communicating with people. I don't know if anybody in here has been in there or has asked her any questions. Um, but I think that it's like kind of like a more safe thing to do now. Um, she's like, uh, she talked with one guy named Nick in there. Uh, Coexistence Steven made a video. Actually, I'm going to pin here because that video is really great. Uh, it basically goes over all these questions and answers uh, that this guy Nick was was asking Maria, just like about just everything you know and like her ideas and um, you know that she went into like a little bit about the peace tables and just some really really great information honestly. And uh, if you're not subscribed to Stephen's YouTube channel, I really highly recommend that you do that. Uh, he's probably one of the biggest content creators that we have for the Atropa ecosystem, and you know we all definitely gotta support each other. But um, while I'm finding that clip, just give me a moment, please. Yeah, guys, if you want to take a look at that video at some point today, uh, you can check out the nest. Okay, and it's right there. But anyways, hope you guys all had a great Saturday. Uh, Sunday here in Thailand it was looking kind of nice. I'll probably go to the beach a little later. And then uh, I got invited to go to a party tonight, but we'll see. I may end up just chilling, but, you know, I kind of need to explore Thailand a bit more than I have recently. So I'll probably get out. These guys, come up here and speak or ask any questions. We can keep the space going. You know, if, if nobody really wants to come up here, there's no point to keep it going, obviously. But I would love to, to host this space for you guys to, to share information, to learn from each other. That's why we're here. I wonder if the Graves wants to come up and talk. I don't know if that's you, Coach, but we were here to talk about p -Dye, if you have any sentiment on that. All right, we got a request. Let's see. Do we get an alien voice or do we get Coach's voice? 
What, what, what's up, Zach? Uh, it's TG. <laughs> oh, TG, what's up? Nothing. Yeah, how's this PDI pump? Dude, it's crazy, man. I woke up to, a, well, I mean, everybody else was awake, but I woke up because I'm overseas uh, to Richard Hart's post about the different stable coins that are on Pulse Chain. Yeah, definitely everyone's speculating on that post. I was kind of reading into it a little bit. I kind of, I like his post because I kind of feel like he always leaves it a little open-ended where it's not like a for sure like slam dunk, but where you like are getting the hint, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's exactly my sentiment too. Like, um, I'm like a full believer that like, if he was to be like, yo guys, like look at Pete eye, isn't it doing great? Like, wouldn't that be a great stable coin? Like people would just like flock to it immediately. All the wrong people would get in it that would just kind of jeet it and not support the project. Uh, so right now it's kind of like only the people who are super like have faith in what's going on and what we're seeing being built and um, are really like the ones that are like, okay, right. I need to get more of this. Like, this is really great. Like this is, this is what we think it is. Um, and then those are the people that are going to be, you know, the benevolent actors later on, hopefully, or at least the majority of us will try to do what we can to support the dollar theory. Right. So, and this whole atropa ecosystem that we have, you know, it's, it's just really mind blowing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's super, super cool to see Richard Hart, you know, kind of coming out a little bit more about the stables and in his own little obscure way. I really agree. So I, I actually have a question for TG because TG, I know you're a pretty smart guy. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this. I asked it before. So the stablecoin function on, let's just say E, say for die, the die contract. Where is the code, or what is the function that allows? the peg to occur to a dollar is it in the contract itself or is there an external function being called that allows it to stay at a dollar yeah zach might know more about that than me since he's been really part of that p die crew of um, <laughs> people but i'll give my opinion on it so on the ethereum side the smart contract there's reserves that they pool and give to, to when P die or not P die when die unpegs and either starts going up too high or going too low, they either pool or give to those reserves to keep it at that dollar amount. And back in, I'd say a few months ago, USDC unpegged because where you, the USDC company, I forget what their name is, um, where they had some of their reserves, that bank actually temporarily shut down. So they couldn't access those funds right away. I believe that's what happened. But then once the bank opened back up, they're able to access the funds and then fund the side of the die that they needed to, or USDC, to get it back to PEG. And that's usually what really just happens with stable coins. But what obviously happens on Pulse Chain is when they fork those token addresses over, they're not supporting the price right now. None of them are. And my hypothesis is, is I believe that the farms haven't been properly utilized by RH yet. And I do think he's going to open up these farms and then give incentive token to pairing the ERC side to the PRC side of stable coins, of SHIB, pretty much anything that he already put the logo into PulseX's. I think he's going to create a farm for those and incentivize people to supply both sides of it so you're not just making LP, the standard LP rewards, you'll be making the incentive token rewards. And what this will do is when you start tying these and bonding these together, it's gonna start bringing up the price of the PRC side um, until it gets closer to parity. Where this has came into play is with Hex, obviously. Um, Hex is technically pretty close to parity as far as P-Hex and E-Hex. And I believe something similar is going to happen with the tokens that he has logos for on PulseX. Um, yeah. None of that's proven or anything. That's just the theory I've cooked up in my head. Um, it's, I think it would be an awesome play for RH, and I, I do think he has something up his sleeve. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's... I mean, not that exact... Uh, chain of events of what I was thinking 
like there could be multiple things. Like he could use the sack fonts honestly to like bridge from since they're all it's all and die. Break that in half. Oh, it's, it's probably going to be a little bit of it all, honestly. Yeah. So I mean, there's multiple methods I believe that could happen to to get it to a dollar. But the question I have is, how does it stay at a dollar? So like you were saying that the reserves get pulled from these banks, but obviously there's got to be some sort of automation that goes into play. And is that my question is, is that where? Where is that automation set up? It's, it's not in the die contract itself. It's, it must be a, uh, an outside entity or contract analyzing the chart or the blockchain to say, okay, you know, die is now 99 cents. Let's grab reserves from here and buy die so it goes back to a dollar. But like, where does that, where does that live? Because my question is, is that when the chain was forked, Obviously, all of the code was forked. So, is the, does the die contract itself have that functionality in it, where it just needs to be called, or is or is it out somewhere else where that's being controlled? Yeah. So they, unless die gave up like their admin keys to the PRC side because of possibly like a private conversation with RH buying it from them or anything like that. We, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes. Um, but well, as of right I now, no admin key. say that again. I said, die has no admin keys. Oh, uh, okay. So I believe at least USDC has admin keys. Um, so I think they can play with maybe theirs, just like I think he even RH has said with Wrap Bitcoin, they can play with theirs, and ultimately they could even shut it off. So is it with Dai? Is it the maker, um, the maker contract that keeps it stabilized then, or something like that? I believe. That be I believe. Oh, because if if you're aware, so back in July, the maker da maker DAO had a vote to edit the DAO or the DAI contract on Pulse Chain to edit the minting function to stop. And there was a million dollar payment to do that, um, or approximately. So that's what started the whole narrative of like, well, uh, who the fuck is spending that much money to change the contract on the Pulse Chain side if DAI is not, does not have some sort of play in the future right like nobody would yeah. spend that much money f for no reason so like but I i'm just trying to understand everybody keeps saying well the atropa dev and the atropa ecosystem it was it was set up at lp to atropa burn 10 million dollars or whatever of lp the whole point of it is to build the floor to get it to peg great but that just gets it there how does it stay there that's been my question since the beginning Okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead, Coach. Maybe you know. Okay, so of course I'm not going to have the answers. Um, I've only can I only can say what I've seen from the blockchain itself. So, <clears throat> with my personal opinion about four one four and the Troba Dev, they understood because they they're actually working on testnet, so they're playing around. I've, I've seen it on on the on chain on testnet all that kind of stuff but ultimately they understood that there was some kind of possibly some kind of of course a speculation but some kind of value of the some of the erc20s from or on pulse chain itself so basically knowing that p die or die so PDI is the most decentralized thing possibly on um, Pulse Chain. And then next, who is the, the, the top, almost has like 3 million die on ETH, Richard Hart. Um, and then I also did uh, some findings um, about a week, about a week ago give or take, I think a week and a couple of days where I found some wallets that 
I wanted to know, know who was the first P or individuals that actually provided liquidity between V1, Pulse, and PDI. So that's where I came to the conclusion that the 414 already speculated that there was a possibility of this happening on Pulse Chain. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep on going down a little bit more about these wallets. So these wallets provided liquidity with, with Pulse and Maker, Pulse and PSHIB, Pulse and uh, P-Link, Pulse and the list goes on and on. It's uh, I went over it on my uh, first stream on YouTube. Everybody can subscribe. Um, got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Um, but anyways, but um, yeah, so... And another note, <clears throat> that same ind individual's wallet has 32,671 P wrap Bitcoin. And when you really th think about it, who would have that much wrap Bitcoin or Bitcoin itself from Ethereum? Who's an individual? I'm going to speculate it's a very rich person we'll say that so with that theory being in mind and then the, the whole connotation about uh what um tg zen was talking about with liquidity that's the only factor what needs to happen because there's the liquidity with p hex and e hex over the bridge okay so the same kind of thing just needs to happen. So on 625, there were farms, incentive farms with uh, <clears throat> P-Rap Bitcoin and I think Pulse, um, P-Rap Bitcoin, uh, not P-Rap Bitcoin, but like Pepe and Pepe. So Pepe from ETH and Pepe um, on Pulse chain, there was a farm on that. So with that, okay. And it was pulled on 7.7. 7. So that same wallet, um, we're going to go back to that same wallet that actually added that liquidity um, on 6.25, took it out on 7.7 7 that same day. So in my hypothesis of the whole reaction of what happened to Pulse Chain, so on July 31st, that is when the SEC did their loss or the lawsuit or whatever the the bs <laughs> thing i want to call it so with that and intel being in mind the person or an individual po probably knew that there was going to be some downturn on the price of pulse so the betterment of not doing trying to do this and get like shot down about 10x or like not 10x about 80 percent or 70 percent maybe wait wait for the fud to be over get up get my army in place get my lawyers get all this shit ready ready to go and have the builder builders build you know and then people can speculate so just like you know what I mean? That was a lot of information, right there. But. <laughs> it was. Hey, but while you were going over that, that was that was a lot of good information. But while you're doing that, I was actually researching the question that we had all been wondering, right? So, uh, Pulse Chain OG, listen up, bro. Um, so I googled how does Dai keep its peg. It says price stability is maintained through game theory and economic incentives that keep its value close to one dollar. To keep the value of DAI pegged to the US dollar, MakerDAO uses an algorithm that adjusts the interest rate on the DAI loans, known as the stability fee, based on supply and demand of DAI. Right? So, what I'm thinking is like, we have all, this, all these tokens, right? And I think that Maria is actually do, trying to do this, right? Um, through this whole Atropi ecosystem. We have some tokens that are like, one is called loan, right? And like other ones, like there may be functions in some of these tokens that could be like the stability loan collateralization type of type of thing that's going on, right? And MakerDAO uses ETH as collateral uh, to peg close to the US dollar. Um, but this other thing says uh, that 
the dollar peg stable coins, you know, like die on ETH, they're not, you know, immune from dropping their pegs. So, I mean, it's, it's like a normal thing that it, people are kind of used to having happen at some points, I guess. Um, and so that like, you know, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a, a dollar at all times, you know, it'll always float around that very, very close to a dollar, but then, you know, maybe it drops a bit, you know, for some for unforeseen reason, uh, but then comes back, obviously, um, based on different metrics, maybe some of these Atropa ecosystem coins have uh, written inside them. Who knows? But it's, but it sounds like the the maker contract is where the is the actual location of where the algorithm lives to pull in pull the money from the collateral asset, right? To back bring it. Yeah, back. it's it's, a, it's an algorithm in the contract. Yes. Yeah, so basically, then, so the maker contract existed on ETH, so when it was forked, there's obviously a maker copy on Pulse Chain. Right, but now that the copies, that, that copy has been changed now to not allow any minting to happen, so I think it may be just operating right. in a different way. Right, but, but the... The admin rights or the the contract that has the ability to do those changes is the Maker DAO contract that is on East Side, but also there's a copy of it on Pulse Chain. So I guess what I'm saying is Maker DAO on ETH, who owns both, it's the same contract, would have to, I would assume, activate. <laughs> that function assuming so, so what I'm saying got is like, sorry so what I'm saying is like the, the, I think the die contract on pulse chain is broken now I think it's not gonna function like it ever functioned on ethereum I think die is just um, a logo and a brand name right I think I'm, I'm thinking is just like a, a just a meme coin with a brand name that's gonna find its dollar peg based on our belief that it will get to a dollar and then some st stabilization methods such as collateralization Okay. That, that's just my belief. I, I could be totally wrong. So the I, I guess so the minting function existed specifically f to do the stabilization. Because I remember in the beginning when I, somebody was talking about it, they made it sound more like a bug than a feature. But I don't know if that's true. I it would I would think that the minting function existed to essentially so say say the price went over a dollar they would mint die to dilute the supply to bring it back to a dollar right that's the incentive there that's like there's like a bit of arbitrage incentive for people to do that which keeps it pegged right and then there was probably a burn function where when it went too low, it would burn the die and bring the price back to a dollar because it'd be less supply. 100%. So they they turn that off. So and if the contract's renounced, then I don't. There would have to be another way to to peg that asset now. Right. It was liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. Yeah, liquidity right, plus so another collateralization method, you know. Someone's trying to make it DAO on Pulse Chain, so like a Tropa manipulating all these liquidities using that as the asset collateralization of DAI. And it is, it's the number one owner of DAI. <laughs> right. And that makes that makes the most sense because you know they use ETH because it's like the most popular coin on Ethereum. Um, but maybe a Tropa and you know is meant to be like that, you know, for the Tropa ecosystem. TG's yeah. in. Why, why are you going to tell me that you're coming in? Oh, I, I just saw Zach hosting the space about PDI, and I saw PDI was pumping, so I figured I'd come and listen. And then right when I popped in, he was just like, oh, come up. So then I came up real quick. That was about it. Nice. Yeah, but super exciting stuff, man. Really, it's, um, I can't like I can't even hardly wrap my mind around it, honestly. 
Yeah, I think that's where a lot of speculation comes from because no one really, or no one that is speaking out loud knows exactly how PDI is going to peg, how it's going to keep its peg, how we're going to get that there. But personally, I believe RH has some tricks up his sleeve. He, he's talked about it, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. Obviously, PTGC has a huge speculation in it. Right now, we have an LP pair with die that is over 100K. Um, that's hence where we've gotten a lot of our pump from, just in Hart's Law, just today. It was just from PDI itself, and that's what a lot of our ecosystem was built on. So I'm just excited to be along for the ride and, you know, really see how this does play out. Because, like you were saying with the Tropa, that Really, at the end of the day, that could be a Tropa's job is to sell the price of a Tropa down or buy the price of the Tropa, a Tropa up via all these levers that Maria has. And maybe that alone, because it's so tied with PDI, is the thing that keeps it pegged at a dollar. Because of them being so tied together, if she manipulates the price of a tropa up or down, it will manipulate the price of PDI up and down because that's just how Hart's Law works. Um, that that 100% could be how they keep it close to a dollar. Right. And I, I've been the speculation basically all along. I'm, I'm sorry, Pulse Chain OJ didn't hear what he said. Nah, I said that. I mean, that what he just said is essentially what the speculation has been all along. Right. That it was, is using levers to move liquidity from the lower, you know, down the rabbit hole up to the Atropa actual coin, which has the biggest tie in LP to PDI to move the price of PDI up or down. Right, and she gets certain coins like minted to herself, right? So she can use those to pump certain things at certain times, you know, like to, you know, keep things up, inflated or whatever. Um, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of different metrics, obviously, that we're still not even really aware of all of them. Um, but yeah, super excited to see what's coming. Um, have you guys been? I mean, would you say oh, that ahead. the Atropa layout, how we understand how it operates with liquidity pools. I mean, would you, maybe my, not by direct definition, but would you say a Tropa is a maker DAO? I mean, you know, I would definitely say that it could be. I just don't really know too much, too much about it yet. You know, like, um, it just, it's seeming like that to me. It's seemingly like that's how this is kind of being set up to be like a replacement for that. I mean, that's certainly what it seems like to me. Because otherwise, I, I haven't seen anything else on Pulse Chain that would be a replacement, quote unquote, for MakerDAO. That's the closest thing I've seen. So unless whatever he was talking about hasn't been built yet, I mean... This is the only thing I can think of that would be what he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, there's never been any other talk of anything like that um, happening, especially for die specifically, right? And like, this is the only thing that's got so much die wrapped up into it. Like, how can we say that that it wouldn't be? You know, like for people that I don't know, when people say like that we're just wrong, right? They're gonna say that they're right and like that, that we're just wrong, like. <laughs> And like we have these videos of Richard saying make her doll replacement for die on Pulse Chain and then a million dollars of Pulse of die wrapped up in Dog Tropa. Like nobody else has that much die to control it, you know, or to do yeah. what they need to do with it. I mean, it may, this makes complete sense to me because all the other stables have admin keys. So you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to have a maker replacement on a token that can be manipulated by an outside entity. Die is the only stable where that is not true. And now that the maker vote happened in July, changed the function and mint and burn or whatever, you know, took that away. Essentially, the supply is fixed and no other maker from ETH can't manipulate it anymore. So it's the perfect token 
to now be utilized as a stable coin that's now manipulated by a DAO that is Dropa. So essentially, they've removed the prior. It's they made the prior DAO system obsolete and were replacing it with a new one, and they got rid of any of the functionality that was tied to the old. And now the, the new will be this Atropa ecosystem. I mean, that's what it seems like is happening here. No, definitely. That's what it looks like. Uh, for anybody that's new here that doesn't really know what we're talking about. Um, the PDI that we keep speaking of is just DAI on Pulse Chain, but it's the copied over version uh, that started at $0 and is working its way up to $1. Uh, it's currently sitting at 0 0.001, which means we have about 1,000x to go until it hits $1, right? So when that happens, obviously, um, there's a lot of gains to be made. And, you know, when, when that time does come, hopefully there's ways to, you know, move some of that money into... Um, other areas inside Pulse Chain, you know, we do not have to extract that value. Um, you know, we can always, you know, support um, a bit and, um, you know, make money as well. Um, but yeah, I posted the contract address to the proper uh, Pulse Chain die. It's the same contract address as on Ethereum. Um, so don't get confused. Uh, there is a different die from Ethereum contract as well that always stays at a dollar on pulse chain but we don't use that or we, we do use that now but we're not going to be using that in the future because it's a bridged over coin and coins that come through the bridge um they're susceptible sorry um to uh the risk uh the, the bridge being hacked there's a, there's a little bit of risk there so it's it's much much better for us to have a a decentralized stable coin that is native to pulse chain and that's why that's why we're all here right we're we're hoping yeah. that this die on pulse chain goes to a dollar and that we can use this later on as a stable coin so i have a question for coach or, or tg uh, um it's about liquid loans it's it has to do with stables though so i actually asked this question to moon king the other day on his uh subscriber twitch or twitch uh, twitter channel spaces call um i was trying to advocate for pdi you know essentially being stable because my opinion the only thing that bolstein doesn't have currently is a liquid stable coin because the issue what's going to happen is is that as the bull market amps up people are making a fuck ton of money uh you know Nobody has any where to park their assets right now. That's not on the bridge, which is a major vulnerability. So anybody that has millions is not going to do that. That's a very bad idea. Um, so they're either going to bridge it out to ETH, which and you know, into fiat, which is expected regardless. Right? People are just going to cash out because that's kind of the point of crypto, right? <laughs> um, at least to an extent, but. If so, there is no liquid native stable coin right now to keep the assets on chain once the amount of money, right? Say, say, Pulse Chain, the entire valuation of Pulse Chain ecosystem goes up to $500 billion. Just a you know, random example. Where the fuck is all that money going to sit? Nobody's going to keep that money parked in assets that are that are volatile, especially as the bull comes to a close and shit starts tanking. Like, you know, people are going to move it off chain unless there is a stable coin, which there really isn't. But his response to that was liquid loans, USDL, is, I guess, I mean, Ox Coast is a stable, but I think the liquidity is thin as fuck. It's like $100,000. I don't know how much is in there, but it's not that much. Plus their interface, I'm not a huge fan. I try to use it. It's not very user friendly, in my opinion, but um, USDL is a, I, I I I don't know much about it, but apparently that is their version of a stable coin. Um, but what is for anybody that is aware of what Liquid Loans is and the USDL coin? What is that? Is that a what is collateralizing USDL? Is it the money that they're getting from? what they're locking up for when they take out leverage? Yeah, I think so. The cl they're collateralized by PLS. 
I mean, I just, I guess I haven't done too much research on it, but that's what I figured. Yeah, I don't know shit about like loans because I don't leverage trade, but at USDL was that was Moon King's response, and I didn't get a chance to have a follow up. So, Coach or Grays, do you, or TG, do you guys? Are you aware of USDL? Like, is that how that works? The collateralization is by the money locked from what is being leveraged on? Or are they pulling uh, that from someone else? To be honest, I know nothing about liquid loans because I don't believe in leveraging your pulse for another token and then possibly losing your pulse. Yeah, I, I just agree. don't believe in taking leverage at all. It just doesn't <laughs> even make sense to me personally at all. If you have the money, use the money. Why would you borrow on that money to possibly lose your money you had in your first place? If you think your play is good, just use your pulse to do that. I just Damn, don't bro. believe it at all. Don't leverage trade, people. It's yeah. fucking hard. Yeah. People um, fucking kill themselves doing that shit, literally. So I haven't really gone down the rabbit hole of how they stabilize or anything, but... I can touch base on what I'm kind of trying to do as far as a safe place to park tons of money is pretty much PTGC was designed to have mechanisms that are constantly supporting the underlying. I understand you want to talk about PTGC, okay, but this, I really don't want to get sidetracked from what we're here for. Um, PTGC is a great project. Uh, I don't want to downplay that, but I really just want to stay on track. Yeah, no problem. So yeah, pretty much I don't know much about liquid loans was <laughs> what, uh, the point of it. Hard <laughs> kill, hard kill. Man. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, you no, know, PDI is like, you know, it's, I started a space I wanted to really kind of just go into what we know and what we kind of want to understand about what's happening. Yeah, cool. Yeah, 100%. Um, well, he, he tweeted about die, guys. <laughs> he tweeted about die today. Come on, it's just like, here's the breadcrumbs. Like, honestly, guys, like, I, I, I guarantee you, he, he, like, heard a space or he heard something he does everybody know he's probably in the telegrams he's just in an, a random person's name that nobody knows about he's watching he's listening it, it, that's why it, like, i brought up in the beginning i was like why would he mention usdc and whatever the other one was in that tweet because like he fucking hates he hates those coins because they have admin keys but maybe that's the whole point but, he wanted to mention all of them but at the same time he's also mentioned he, but he's just like he mentioned he's like all right you want to shut shut uh your your shit off on my chain guess what you're gonna have like all right usd or usdc you want some lawsuits on your hands i say like, you're based in the fucking us so you want to play those games you want to play big ball stuff? Okay, okay. But at the same time, it's it, it those assets are also uh, there was Pulse and PUSDC and Pulse and PSUT or USDT um, created by that same wallet that I I just always just go back to. So it's just like, all right, you want to play that game? All right. Or you want to like bring more value and bring more financial freedom to like just thousands of thousands of people. Which game do you want to play? Like, are you for the people or are you for the bullshit establishment? I was like, ultimately, if you guys didn't have, if you haven't been woken up yet and out of this matrix of a propagandist society that we're in right now by the media by the school system, by everything. Like this is blockchain, this is new technology, and it's just like, it's the future. People just need to wrap their head around that. Like this is the stuff, like I had a phone call with my dad today. My dad is a banker, okay? He's been a banker, he's like a branch manager, uh, regional, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then, <clears throat> And he has this whole mindset that the banking 
institution is never going to go away. I'm like, I guarantee you, I, I told him before, like, um, some of the big, uh, like banks to go down last year. I was like, I was like, dad, these, this, or basically there's going to be five banks that are going to be going down in the next two weeks. And then what bam, what bam, what bam called him up. I was like, told you so. So when, when are you going to start like buying your first big, Oh, I don't want to buy that shit. It's just like, no, guess what you can actually do with your, it's not even money. It's like, it's energy flowing. You can move your, it's not even fiat. It's not even money. Stop like having that mindset of money. It's just energy. Whatever energy that you have, you find the best route that's going to bring yourself to that financial freedom that you're not going to have to worry about um, a nine to five. You can be your own boss. You can be your own life. You don't have to surround yourself on breadcrumbs and all that kind of stuff. So essentially, if you get your education right and you understand the blockchain, there's more to it than just buying and selling or holding. There's more to it than just the telegram and just memeing it up and all that. All that stuff is good, but ultimately it's <clears throat> like going into those big investments like a or like Hex or Bitcoin or all that kind of stuff. Or then it goes to the speculative assets that are building and just build beautiful ass or things. And then, and then it gets to the speculative uh, aspects that you don't really know what's going on around in the back or uh, the back end, but you can actually go down the rabbit hole of the chain itself and see it hopefully what it's actually doing. So once people start doing exactly those things and attributes, especially in pulse chain itself, like, and then you can take your own, the whole thing into like the whole meme coin space. Like, don't just ape it into shit that you don't know about. Make sure it's renounced. Make sure it, it, there's burnt liquidity. Make sure that the the there's not like five people holding 20% hey, of the supply. What? I'm going to be getting off, so I just want to say bye to Zach and Pulse OG real quick. And you too. Oh, yeah. All right, brother. No, thanks for coming night. in, man. I, I appreciate your sentiment, man. You're a smart dude, and I uh, I welcome you in here anytime. Well, thanks, Zach. Yeah, yeah, thanks for holding the spaces, and you know, thanks for all the stuff you do for Pulse Chain. We appreciate it. Definitely, bro. See you guys. Later, man. See you. Have a good day. But yeah, here's you. But who who in the entire Pulse Chain ecosystem has the most to make? From Pete I pegging. Richard Hart. <laughs> yeah, the Richard Hart has the yeah. so the sacrifice wallet really is the largest holder of Pete I, right? Which is the community's money technically. So you would just be giving it back to all of us. What what would happen if he like used all that money and put it into liquidity and then burnt put it into the debt address? <laughs> I mean, that's what I said. I, I think he's gonna gonna take and guess what? that wallet, bridge it over, pair it, burn that bitch, an right, instant peg, bro. And because he's gonna, whole chain he's gonna, has such liquidity bonding and basically everything else to BLS, everything else would just fucking go nutty. So that's what I think is a good point. But like, I'm just gonna bring a bigger scope and possibly another outcome that I, ju I just thought of. So like with that being said, it's most likely going to be on V1. So he can burn the crap out of Pulse X. So A, that's that would be like a huge metric. Then once he does bridge it over and then he gives incentive um, incentives to bridge over, he's going to be ultimately one of the biggest um, uh, holders of that LP, essentially he's going to be getting, if he puts like the incentive reward token, then he possibly be, can be become the biggest incentive holder, which is be possibly another debt address, or he uses that incentive token to provide more liquidity with PDI or 
any of the other e ERC twenties. I don't know. That's a it's a theory right there. It's a good theory though. Yeah, it's just if he if P die packs, Sack Wallet has six hundred mil in there. He can deploy that shit to fucking pump everything or LP it to a bunch of shit and burn it. Like, there's just so many possibilities that could happen if that were to, were to occur. $600 million. <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy. Now everybody's like, well, he's not going to, he's not going to do anything with the OA funds. It's like, yeah, maybe. But he did fuck, I mean, Associated Wallets pumped PLS and Hex the other day. I mean, I don't think it was SAC funds. It was like interest that he made off of, off of it. Or I don't, I don't know exactly, but I don't think it came from the SAC wallet. It was like, uh. Basically, interest made on it, or whoever was making fees. Right. Yeah. No, I'm not sure about any of that either, really. But like, that's like, I, I just don't really understand how people could have the thought that they would not be used for anything. Like, just because he said it's your sacrifice money and it's gone, like, why would like that's just so much money to go to waste? Like, when it could be used in a good way. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be used. It's just... He said it takes 52 weeks or 50 weeks to shake out the fucking paper hands. I really think what happened is, is that all the copied... He doesn't... He doesn't want the copied versions when they start getting value, because obviously they have value now, a lot of them. He doesn't want the whales on East to just fucking dump on the heads of everyone else, so... He's, he's slowly letting these copied pairs, you know, build up some price action so that these people sell off early. And then when, it, when everything, when everything kind of looks okay, like there's not a whole lot of whales going on here from the copied side, let's deploy deploy the funds and now we've got a fuck he, he literally said it he's like I want to mint the most millionaires in history or some shit and how do you do that it's like well basically what we're talking about it's like well what is he waiting for it's like well it's due to that he doesn't want ETH whales to also be whales on pulse chain so how do you avoid doing that um, obviously ETH the, the PL, uh, PLS to ETH ratio was one to one, so like the ETH whales, the actual ETH token, they're not going to be whales because um, that was just baked in to how he, how it was deployed. But all the other tokens are one to one, so as the money climbs, right? Like if they are still holding that amount of the percentage percentage of the asset like they can just dump on everyone's head but if it slowly builds and they're like oh sweet i have ten thousand dollars over here now where it's like a million dollars over on ETH, maybe they say oh fuck it's i'll sell it like this ain't going nowhere it flushes out the system so 50 weeks later which would be in a couple of months after the halving <laughs> uh something may happen yeah. Either that or this is no, waiting. It's before it's before the happening. That's the perfect it? time to do it. May what was the launch? May fourteenth. You, you want you like you have to think about it like if you are a like a dev or something, okay? So Richard Hart is a dev, so we have to think about that. But his project is a lot bigger than majority of the projects being built on Pulse okay? So we have to think about that. So like with like different um, marketing schemes or different like blockchain, like adding or buy and burns or adding farms or stuff like that. So like anything that's built like SparkSwap, 
um, nine inch, all, all, all kinds of projects, um, like doing updates and stuff like that. There's always been more things being built. So it's the same kind of concept what I'm thinking in a game theory type of place. So, cause like people don't really think about this kind of stuff. They don't think about like the, impl- imp- like it's just the same thing about like building a business. Like, do you, do you just play all your cards all at once? Or do you just, you, you, sh- you play your cards you start like dealing them out and you're just like, all right, I show you a freaking Jack. What do you do? Okay, cool. I'm going to wait. Oh, it's my turn again. Okay. Here's a queen. Okay. What are you guys going to do? All right. Here's a king. And then like here, like maybe like six months later, it's just like, all right, ace checkmate type of thing. Like it's the same kind of philosophy. What I think he's actually doing for the ecosystem of pull chain. He's letting the, 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 the right projects being built ultimately to help out the whole ecosystem of self. If we like leverage training or not, there, it's needed. There's individuals that like doing that kind of shit. Let them do it. All right. They're, they're like liquid loans. They're an asset if you like it or not. Cause like there's ways to make money and I'm actually going to be going over that. Um, on one of my streams in the morning time, I think Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to be going over that. Um, if you want to subscribe, that's a, I'm not going to show that. Gonna Don't worry. His <laughs> lateral. No, I'm not going to do that, but, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but there's like, there's just like, ultimately that's what I really think is going on. It's just like, all right, get your floor, get your community. We'll see what you can do. We'll see the, the the good projects out of the bad projects. You know, we ultimately see that or seen that, like the good sack projects and the bad sacks. We've seen the charts. We've seen P die the community aspect to it. Teddy, uh, HOA, PTGC, like uh, PRS. Uh, ultimately, like good individuals in the community trying to build some kind of community. Um, bringing um, value to people um, and then it's like, all right, you guys been waiting for this. What bam, here we go. And then he's just like, he's just, we're just holding his hand and he's, and he's like, just don't let go. Don't let go of me. Get ready. Become free. You know, ultimately that's what he's trying to do on pull chain. Being, being basically one of the most decentralized layer ones created you know it's just it's uh like it's a it's a beautiful pleasure to be a part of it you know what i mean that's why the pdi narrative makes so much sense bro because no admin keys community driven bro like nobody can fuck with it um pulse chain lg i got a question for you um have you been paying attention at all to the the chat logs? Just curious. Nah, honestly, the fucking that shit was too crazy, bro. Like Maria was psychotic, bipolar for a while, so I kind of tuned that shit out. But why? What's going on? You know, it's just getting pretty interesting in there. She's like going into a lot more detail and being like answering people's questions and um. Yeah, so I mean, maybe if, if you if you have questions, I mean, I would probably recommend maybe going in there and asking questions, you know, because you could probably learn a bit. Um, but also, even just going back and reading through some of the chat logs would be a good help. But basically, she's building this like second layer um, of Atropa. It's um, like she calls it like the layer two uh, dysnomia, and she refers to it as like, a game. Um, but it's you know filled with you know game theory and. You know, she talks about different monsters and tokens that you can send to somebody that will give you an advantage over them inside the game. And um, there's, a, I mean, a bunch of weird stuff, <laughs> honestly. But uh, it seems really, really interesting and, like, a very, very complex uh, whatever's, whatever's happening, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it's just, I mean, that's a whole other layer of excitement, I guess, for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of all the, I just, 
there's just too much shit going on to be honest i can't <laughs> i got a, a day job so i can't like fucking do all that shit it's just it's getting wild but um uh, the one thing i am looking forward to is i'm aware of the bff ak uh you know i guess target if BFF hits AK, she's going to deploy like a bunch of money, I think, to the Teddy LP and burn it. Maybe some other ones. Yeah, she's going to she's going to pair like over a hundred BFF tokens when it's AK a token uh, to tokens all over her ecosystem. So Teddy will just be one of those, and she wants like the whales that are holding BFF to kind of like follow suit and like choose tokens you know, that they think are, you know, positive for the ecosystem and to burn liquidity with those BFF. And then she said that she was going to go on to pump the teddy bear token with her BFF tokens that she had remaining. So that was definitely interesting stuff to hear. But she also said that the BFF token was like... Um, you know, the $8,000 mark would be like a, like a new price floor. Hopefully that's like, the, it's like an experiment. I guess that's what's going on just to kind of see, um, you know, how like the top holders will act, you know, once we get to a place like that, right. Um, she, she thinks that the token price can go a much, much, much higher than AK. And I think it could probably go over a hundred. Um, but that's only if, you know, the people that are holding aren't just, you know, dumping the price, you know, once we get to our first, uh, price target. Yeah, I mean, you're more involved in the chat logs than I am. Uh, I was back once I swapped over to the IRC, and it kind of seemed like a bot, like a bot was responding in some parts of the day. I, it was fucking weird. I kind of like stopped following at that point. Um, but in your honest opinion, what do you believe is the main goal of the Atropa Atropa Dev Maria? Is she do you think her main goal is to peg die, or do you think she that's like a essentially like a side quest, if you will, like that ultimately that will occur based on what she's doing, but that's not her, her is it a boy is it a guy or a girl? Do we know? Maria? I mean, well we think it's this guy that we I mean we're like all ninety percent sure it's this guy named James, but you know, they go by Maria and we're not even really sure if it's this James person. That's kind of just like what the like breadcrumbs has led us to believe. Um, I'll just, you know, for then. So does, is four, do you believe four and four's primary goal is to peg die or bring die to a dollar? Or do you believe that's a secondary, um, that's secondary to whatever she's, 414 is building like I, I know early on somebody said it sounded like she or 414 was kind of like modeling the ecosystem off a game essentially um and what you just said about dysnomia layer two definitely would make sense um but I, I i'm curious like based on everything that she said uh, over the past couple of months in the logs like is all of this just a game theory to get die to peg? Like essentially she's this person is just trying to generate transactions and volumes so that the the bots can the arbitrage our bots can continuously build the floor of the Tropa P I L P. Uh see so yeah, short answer yes. Um basically somebody interviewed Maria inside the chat logs. So there's there's one, it's like a separate log. Um, and I can actually, I gotta find the link and I can post it in here. But there's like a, an interview style interview, like with this person, Nicole, who is interviewing, you know, the Maria name. And, you know, one of the questions was, you know, what is, what is the purpose of the Atropa ecosystem? And she directly said that the Atropa ecosystem is here to help bring the P copied over P stable coins to their um, counterparts on Ethereum, like parody. That, that, that was the answer that she gave. Interesting. I see. I wonder if the time, like if the timeline got thrown off or if you want to say that, because 
for folks that were here in the beginning, like there was a very specific before auto router even existed on PLSX, like or PulseX. There's a very specific um, buy route you had to take to have the least amount of slippage. So, like, there was multiple layers. Like, you had to buy, you know, start off with P dye to get into a tropa, a tropa into teddy bear, and then a you know bear into down or legal, like that whole situation. But people started LPing PLS, rap PLS to uh, die and, and a tropa and all those coins. Um, so now you don't really need if that slippage aspect, right? Of like going down that route isn't as necessary anymore because the LP is thick enough. It's actually thicker now, I believe, between PLS and die versus a tropa and die. So like, I wonder that because that LP, I don't believe, was started by 414. It was community-driven. And that just got built up over time because obviously, like, PLS, having PLS equates to being able to extract money out of the ecosystem. Um, so I, I wonder if, like, because if, if, if PLS, if that PLS pool never started and it was how it was in the beginning, like, all the all these transactions would have been sort of within a contained within a box, so to speak, and so much more art would have been going on, and all the four would have probably been built faster that way. Had WPLS pool never existed, so I'm wondering if if like the plan, this whole plan is to peg die, but like it's like, well, when's that going to happen? Like, is this is this 10 years from now like you know what's what's the plan like i wonder if like that got kind of threw her off because of the pls pool that is now thicker than the die to a tropa pair um yeah so i'm not really sure um is is it is it thicker though is how much how much is an lp between those two uh, maybe it's not i know but, like, there's like over 10 million in the pls or the die tropa pair I don't know if it's that thick on on PLS. Uh, let me see. I'm not really sure. Um, I think that I think that WPLS pool, the WPLS P die pool, I think that's what Coach was talking about earlier when he was talking about the wallets. I think it's like we're speculating that it's like an RH connected wallet that started that P die WPLS pool right when Pulse Chain launched. So P die WPLS V two is almost five hundred k. So yeah, I mean, okay. So Atropa, the Atropa V is a V one die Atropa is ten. Yeah, million? yeah. Or it could be more than that now. I wonder what WPLS die V one. Probably not much in V one. 